Okay, welcome. Today we're going to talk about lipids, which we're calling the energy storehouse. Okay, so just a little bit of general information about lipids. Uh, there's four categories that we have. We have fats, oils, waxes, and steroids. Okay, and the uses of these lipids, um, one and most predominantly that we would have would be energy storage. Okay, fats are a huge store of energy for animals and um, people, really, alike. Okay, uh, the structural component of your membranes and your cells are comprised a lot, or made up a lot of lipids. So what's called a phospholipid bilayer, um, it has many, many lipids inside. Okay, and then waterproof covering. If you guys remember from a previous lecture, we talked about how fats are nonpolar. Uh, nonpolar uh, molecules like to resist or stay away from, if you will, polar molecules like water. So it kind of goes along with that whole like dissolves like. You have polar versus nonpolar, so they're not going to mix, and that's why lipids are uh, good waterproof coverings. All right, so now we're going to talk about the structure of lipids. Lipids basically are made up of four parts, and they always look like an E when they're put together. So it's a nice way to kind of remember it. The first part is called a glycerol, and that is sometimes referred to as the glycerol backbone. Um, the three fatty acid chains that attach form the arms of the E. And depending which fatty acid chains you have attached to the glycerol will determine what type of lipid you actually have. Now this all together, because of the three fatty acid chains, is sometimes called a triglyceride. Tri meaning three, glyceride coming from the glycerol backbone. Now, there are three types of fat that you've probably heard of. You have your unsaturated fats, which are considered the good guys. Those are like your olive oils, your corn oils, basically any fat that's a liquid at room temperature. Then you have your saturated fats. These are the bad guys. These are the ones that you can eat in moderation, but you don't want a whole lot of. For example, butter. Saturated fats tend to be solid at room temperature. Now trans fats, these are the ugly guys. The trans fats are the fats that you want to stay away from. They can cause you to have really bad health, heart attacks, heart disease, clogged arteries. And the trans fats are the fats that were in the news when they were trying to clean them out of all of the fast food restaurants because they were so unhealthy for you. Now there are two types of fats. Unsaturated fats have fatty acids that contain at least one double carbon-carbon bond. Remember that we talked about carbon chains can have single, double, or even triple bonds. So the way you can tell if a, if a fat is unsaturated is that at least one of the three fatty acids has a carbon-carbon double bond. These unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature. Saturated fats have fatty acids that don't have any double carbon-carbon bonds. So all of their carbon bonds are single bonded. And these tend to be solid at room temperature. If you take a look at this picture, you can see that the saturated fat, take a look at the carbons and look along the carbon chain and as I as I show you here, there's all single bonds holding these carbons together. So no double bonds. And remember, this is a fatty acid. Okay, this is right here is a fatty acid. So if the fatty acid looks like this, then and all three of them look like this, then you have a saturated fat. If you look down here, here's a fatty acid that as you move along the carbon chain, you get to one that has a double bond. You can see the two lines here representing the double bond. If any of the three fatty acids in the fat molecule have this double bond along its carbon chain, then it makes it an unsaturated fat. Now you can have two types of unsaturated fats. You can have monounsaturated fat, which means that there's only one double bond found in the fatty acids. Monounsaturated fats are very good for you. They actually increase 
uh, it actually reduce um, the cholesterol that you have uh, and reduce bad cholesterol. Polyunsaturated fats mean that there's more than one double carbon bond um, found along the fatty acid chains. Poly meaning many. Now these are extremely good for you. Um, they can actually reduce the risk of sudden death when you have a heart attack. The last type of fat was trans fat. And trans fats um, are unsaturated fats that have been manufactured so that they stay solid at room temperature. So remember we said that unsaturated fats are normally liquid at room temperature. The structure of trans fat is different than the structure of a regular unsaturated fat. And remember, unsaturated fats have those double double, uh, those double carbon bonds. So unsaturated fats have more of a bent appearance than a trans fat does. So let's take a look at the two types of fatty acids here. Notice that they both, if you look at the carbon, carb the carbon chains here, as I move down here, they have a double bond, and so does this one. Okay, the carbon-carbon chain with the double bond is right here. So both of these have double bonds. But notice this fatty acid, the hydrogen, one hydrogen is above and one hydrogen is below the carbon chain. This is a fatty acid that would form in a trans fat. This fatty acid has a double-double bond where both hydrogens are above the carbon chain. This formation of this double carbon bond um, is what you would find commonly in an unsaturated fat. So again, this fatty acid here is something that you would find in a trans fat where the, we have one hydrogen above and one hydrogen below. This fatty acid here with the carbon double bond, both hydrogens are up and this would form in an unsaturated fat. So trans fat, unsaturated fat. Now trans fats are found to be even worse than saturated fats in terms of your actual health. Uh, this is why they were in the news a couple years ago, and now what you see in a lot of different things is um, no trans fats. Uh, companies are trying to advertise the fact that they don't use these fats. And that is the Lipid Slideshow. As we mentioned in the introduction to carbohydrates, the periodic table hides some useful secrets. This column headed by helium has no great urge to make bonds with other atoms. The column to its left wants to make one bond. The second column to its left wants to make two bonds. Third column atoms want to make three bonds, and so on. Remembering this information, let's make a fatty acid molecule. This carbon atom wants to make four bonds. So let's give it a double bond with oxygen. And let's give it a single bond to an OH molecule. That's a total of three bonds for the carbon. It still wants another. So let's give it another carbon for its fourth bond. But now we have the need for three more bonds for the new carbon. Let's give it two hydrogens and another carbon. Now this new carbon needs three more bonds. So we give it two hydrogens and another carbon. We could keep going, making a chain of carbons, with each carbon having two side bonds to hydrogen. But let's end it by adding three hydrogen atoms, like this. This molecule is a molecule of butyric acid. It is the shortest chain fatty acid, containing only four carbon atoms. Here is another fatty acid. It is a molecule of stearic acid. It contains 18 carbon atoms. Notice that all the middle carbons in the chain contain bonds to two hydrogen atoms. This configuration contains the maximum number of hydrogen atoms possible. So this molecule is termed saturated, as in saturated fat. An alternate possibility for an 18 carbon fatty acid is this one. It is a molecule of oleic acid. 
and notice there is a double bond between carbons 9 and 10. So each of those carbons have only one bond available for the side hydrogen. Since there is a possibility to add hydrogens to this configuration, we say that it is unsaturated. And since there is only one carbon double bond, we say that it is monounsaturated. If there were two or more, we would say that it is polyunsaturated. Also notice that the carbon double bond causes a kink in the carbon chain. All naturally occurring fatty acids with a double bond have a kink in their shape at the location of the double bond. But it is possible to manufacture fatty acids that are transformed in shape to do away with that kink. These trans fats are more stable, so food manufacturers prefer them. But without the kink, they physically pack together easily and tend to clog arteries as a result. Adding hydrogen to replace carbon double bonds is called hydrogenation. Now let's build a fat molecule from these fatty acid building blocks. We begin with a molecule of glycerol, which will form the backbone of the molecule and hold the fatty acids in place. These hydrogen atoms in the glycerol then combine with OH molecules at the end of the fatty acid chains to form three molecules of water, while the rest of the fatty acid chains join to the now exposed oxygen atoms. Three fatty acids joined to the glycerin form a molecule of triglycerides. And although triglycerides can become hazardous to your health, if the level of them in your bloodstream gets unnaturally high, they play an important role in metabolism as energy sources and transporters of dietary fat. 